Yesterday, some Nigerian refugees who fled the ongoing conflict in Ukraine were disappointed when their airpiece flight was not allowed to take off from the Chopin Airport in Warsaw, Poland, because several passengers were more than four hours late. According to reports by Arise News correspondent Adefemi Akinsonya, who is in Warsaw covering the evacuation exercise, the tardiness was caused by the reluctance by many Nigerians to return home. This morning, however, another AP's flight is scheduled to bring back another batch of Nigerians who crossed the Ukrainian border into Hungary in order in, to avoid the hiccups encountered with the evacuation of Nigerians from Poland. The Nigerian embassy in Hungary has been fast-tracking documentation and carrying out last-minute checks of citizens ready to return home. Now joining us from Budapest, the Hungarian capital, to update us on the evacuation process is Dr. Modupe Irele, the Nigerian ambassador to Hungary. She will also be bringing us up to speed on the number of documented Nigerian refugees the embassy has received and how many are willing to return home. Good morning, Dr. Irele, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, talk. Thank you very much indeed. Well, I mean, Ambassador really, what challenges are you facing? We're told that uh, in total, over 2,000 persons to be evacuated from Poland, about 600 showed up uh, from Hungary, uh, maybe about another 250 or thereabouts. And then there's this talk about documentation, uh, people not wanting to come back home. What are the specific challenges that you face that you like the Nigerian government and the public to be aware of? Thank you for your question. Actually, in um, Hungary, we had about 800 or so re refugees coming into the country from different borders with Ukraine. There were mostly about three borders that were used, but a total of five were available. So the first issues that we had was knowing which borders they were coming from. But by the third day, we had sort of got an idea of where they were coming from, and we were able to strategize and put um, appropriate measures in place and buses and so on. So over the last few days, we've received about 800 um, refugees or uh, stranded people is probably a better word that came in from Ukraine into Hungary. Right. What advice are you giving, Ambassador, to Nigerians who are reluctant to come home? Obviously, they're under no compulsion. But there was a gentleman that we spoke to on this show, Doctor, well, future Doctor Angela Lua Ero, and he was saying he's just three months, like left to you know, become a doctor, to qualify. So as a result of that, he's hesitant to throw all that work away and come back to Nigeria. There are probably other people in that situation. We just spoke with our correspondent, Adifemi Akinsoya, and she referred to the fact that some Nigerians are hesitating to come home because they have loved ones who are still stuck in Ukraine. What advice would you like to give to those people? Um, it is definitely true that some people are uh, a bit unsure about whether they should go home. We have to remember that many of them have spent quite a long time in university. They have maybe just a few months to go or even maybe a couple of years to go. And um, it's not easy to have your education broken in that way. However, um, most of the countries and indeed Hungary have given them only a temporary um, refuge. So until the legal documentation issues are resolved, it would be unwise to just assume that you can come into another country and stay on without being properly documented there. And that's what I've tried to tell um, people, that yes, I understand what it is that you're going through, but you must remember that you have to be documented within the country and stay there as a legal uh, migrant. I'm sure many of the um, institutions may understand, and they do. The Hungarian government, in particular, has been understanding about that, and they've given uh, something like between one and three months 
stay for um, our nationals who are stranded here. But those are the issues that they have to contend with. Also is the fact that the government has very magnanimously paid for their trip back to Nigeria. And it's good to take that opportunity to go back. Their parents are really anxious to see them. Their parents are um, worried when they're not there. So if they have the opportunity to go back in a good structured way, there's always that opportunity to come back and then to come back in a way that doesn't give you any further problems. And I know that there'll be institutions who will be willing to do that for them, starting from Nigeria, and then they can get their documentation, their visas, and so on. But um, it is something that they are worried about. A few of them are worried about. Right. Uh, so far, we have... Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Ma. Finish, finish up. I was going to say that so far, we have quite a number of uh, people who also want to go back to Nigeria. So, um, you know, it's not, it's not all doom and gloom. Many people want to go back to Nigeria. Okay. So, uh, real quickly, they said there was a little back and forth before the Hungarian government finally accepted to give them one month. And they said that as long as the war continues, there will be renewals for that. I mean, tell us what happened back and forth, because we got some... I got some messages from some Nigerians out there that there was a lot of back and forth and it took a little protest for the Hungarian government to accede to their request to even give them one month extension in the first place. I'm not sure about that and I'm not sure about the validity of everything that involves the statements you just made. I do know that normally a Schengen visa is anything for three months, but um, I, some people, I think, at the beginning got three months, but most are now getting one month. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier on about making sure that you are well documented within the country. As long as you're behaving yourself and you keep to that one month, we don't know what's going to happen with this war. We don't know if it's going to be long drawn out or not long drawn out. And um, so the countries, particularly Hungary, is particular about being able to track the people that come in. And um, I'll, uh, we'll go on to say that even those who have crossed into Hungary without um, passports have been allowed to come in as long as their biodata um, could be uh, obtained, they would get their um, fingerprints and all the other biodata um, that is usually required, and then they are allowed to leave, usually into the hands of the embassy, so that um, they know that they are there and the circumstances under which they arrived. Okay, yes, Ambassador, nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. Nobody knows how this will shape out. Uh, but what's your reading of this situation? Because you are there in Eastern Europe. And then secondly, uh, we had a report this morning of uh, Nigerians being evacuated uh, from Poland, from the Chopin uh, airport uh, in Warsaw. Uh, what is the uh, coordination arrangement to get people out of your own base uh, in Hungary? Um, to answer the first question very quickly, I think all I can say is that I hope and pray that the two major parties can come to some kind of decision. I think the whole situation took the world by surprise um, and it has escalated very quickly. So we are hoping that negotiations and diplomacy can bring some kind of resolution to it. Um, so, so far it's early days yet to say in terms of the evacuation, um, well, actually, as I'm talking to you now, people are already on their way to the airport. Um, they're also gathering at the embassy because we've got different convergence points just to make sure that people know that they are going to travel today and they know where to come to. So, in, in fact, immediately after this uh, broadcast, I shall also be joining them to make sure that 
you know, those little hitches, those little unseen, unforeseen hitches are um, smoothed away. What do you make of um, a statement attributed to President Zelensky of Ukraine with regard to the fire at the Ukrainian nuclear reactor, which thankfully has been put out now? He said that Ukraine has 15 nuclear reactors, and if any one of them should blow, the whole of Europe will be in danger. What's your take on that, since you're just, you know, westward, you're a neighbor to Ukraine? Are you alarmed at all? Well, not to be alarmed by that <laughs> kind of statement would make one almost a superhero. Um, it is alarming, but thank God it's, it's under control. Um, you know, these days, the weapons of warfare are advanced and they're, you, know, you don't actually have to be next to somebody to have the effect of it. So we just have to keep on hoping and praying that it doesn't um, get to that particular point. Okay, we just can only hope and pray it doesn't get to that particular point. Uh, there have been stories of some Nigerians, you know, that are not willing to come back and they're making alternative plans. In fact, there was a story, I think it was out of Poland yesterday, that some of them are missing. So take for instance, I think Poland said they processed over 2,000 and they said, you know, they can't, they can't get the full ensemble of all the Nigerians again. Uh, have you had any problems like that in Hungary, that probably some of them have walked away to look for their own plans and arrangements and all of that? And also, I'd like to ask, for people that would like to continue their education in Hungary to transfer from Ukraine, people that study medicine, for instance, is there any assistance that will be given them, to them, you know, from the uh, Nigerian uh, uh, embassy there? To help them to make this transfer because a lot of them are saying i'll just rather transfer and continue in hungary since i have one or two years and since the educational system is almost the same in terms uh, to answer your first question first in terms of people walking away we've tried very hard to document and keep track of them but it's been a little bit difficult because people keep streaming it. and even as we're talking now people are coming in to Hungary. So we meet them at the border and then we assist them to come into the main city. But as I said earlier on, there are five borders. So there's some people who can come in and we wouldn't even know that they have come in. And then when we put accommodation is also a big problem. So they're accommodated in different areas. So it would not be surprising at all that some people who don't want to come back um, may not show themselves up to us again, but they are most still, they are legally here because they have been given temporary respite to be here. It's only when that temporary stay expires that it then becomes um, an issue for both governments probably. Um, the second question about the education. My, as an educationist myself, my heart goes out to students who um, have their education truncated in one way or another. However, right now, my primary concern is to make sure that they have shelter, they're safe, and that they can be evacuated back to Nigeria. If there are possibilities to continue the education, and the um, government of Hungary, the institutions of Hungary can set up something that we can assist in in a structured way, then that would definitely be very um, welcome. Anything that makes their stay pleasant and their study um, easy is what we would like. If they're here illegally, that study period cannot be pleasant and will not be easy for them. So I am definitely wanting them to be able to continue their studies in the place of their choice, as well as if they have the means to do that. But I would like it to be done in a way that is dignified and gives everybody the dignity, Nigeria uh, dignity, the Hungarian government dignity, and the student himself, in herself dignity. Well, I said, very quickly, 
Um, I'm, I'm sure you are aware that President Buhari has released $8.5 million, a total of about uh, $3.5 billion uh, naira to facilitate all of this process. And I know that the missions abroad usually have problems uh, getting uh, uh, requisite uh, funding. And out of that $3.5 billion uh, naira, um, you know, embassies in Eastern Europe are supposed to take care of uh, accommodation, transportation, feeding, uh, why the, uh, you know, refugees, if we can use that term, are in transit. Have you had any problems getting necessary funding since the president gave his approval? Is there an issue in that regard? Okay, I'll just quickly make one correction. Hungary is in Central Europe. Okay. And um, right from the start of this situation, the government, through the, our um, Minister of Foreign Affairs, has assured us that their main concern is to get the um, stranded nationals back home. They've told us, and they have assured us, and I know that, as you've said, money has been um, allocated for that. So we're not worried um, too much about getting that the funds in for that. The government has paid a lot already, just in terms of even the planes that are coming in. Several planes are coming in into Hungary. We're expecting at least two. One is starting today, and another one will be um, shortly uh, airlifting. Romania is also expecting to, I think one went yesterday, and um, they're expecting another one. So that in itself shows the government's commitment to making sure that um, everybody comes home. The um, logistics money for logistics money for buses and so all those things we know um, are m money for that is essential. Immediate funding has been um, approved and has been assured. Anyway. The government is absolutely... Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much, Ambassador Irele. We just want to be sure that, uh, you know, you are in a safe place with the assignment uh, that your mission has been given. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you for joining thank you us so on the morning show.